All right, so it's been asked um, mostly by family and friends what I take to a reenactment and uh, and what do I do with it. So um, just wanted to put together a quick video to show everybody what I do take to my reenactments. Um, and if there are any other World War II reenactors out there, uh, they can input their feedback as well. Um, this might be a little bit of a winded video, so I apologize. But um, yeah, we can go ahead and just dive into it. So to start out with... Um, the upcoming event is a Bastogne uh, reenactment, and I do airborne reenacting. Um, I'll get into that soon with my uniform, but um, so I'm running the M1 carbine, and this is an all original USGI um, parts M1 carbine. Um, and what I'm actually doing for this event, I'm going with pretty minimalist uh, amount of kit. So pretty much everything that's right here besides the K-Ration crate will be on my person. Um, so, and I'm kind of going for a full immersion uh, if I really can with uh, limited ammo and, uh, and supplies. So, because um, at this point and where we're at with the battle, um, we're, we're, you know, under supply and don't really have enough uh, food, ammunition, and so forth. So I'm kind of limiting, limiting what I'm taking out there to match that. So, but yes, um, all original GI parts, someone carbine, uh, it's been blank adapted. A friend of mine did this for me and I actually got this from him, but I've used this at plenty of other events. It's been phenomenal. I do have the paratrooper stock for it, um, for like D-Day impression and so forth. But by this point in the war, um, they would have been using fixed stock carbines and, uh, pretty much a wide array of weapons, which is kind of good for this time frame because the amount of gear can be literally early war, mid war, late war, everything mashed together because they just had whatever they could. So, um, diving into, I guess, next my web kit setup. I try to use as much original gear and kit as I possibly can um, with my reenactments. So, everything on my uh, web kit minus the uh, bandage pouch and the um, musette bag is original. Uh, the cool thing though about this musette bag is it's a ATF one from maybe four, three or four years ago and it's already starting to get and it's really got that nice worn look to it so it looks the part. Um, I do have some original uh, musette bags but they're in almost like a new old stock condition so I don't really want to run around with those out in the field so that works perfectly fine. But really, for anybody looking for this kind of kit and equipment, um, check eBay. There's some really good online auctions and stuff, too. So a lot of times you can find original gear um, for the price or lower of, of uh, reproduction. So highly recommend looking into that. Um, I guess moving right along. So Garrison Cap, this came from SM Wholesale. I've had this for three years now, and it's got a, a good look to it. Uh, my helmet. So this was a front, this is a front seam, um, but it was originally a swivel bail. I sent it to Drop Zone Helmet on Instagram and he uh, redid it for me with the weathered 502nd markings. Um, I'm a corporal in our unit, so I had the NCO stripe put on the back. But um, it's got a Westinghouse liner inside, so I've had this for a while. But this is my Market Garden uh, Bastogne helmet. I do have another one though for Normandy impression, but he turned it from a swivel bale to a D bale. Um, so pretty awesome work there with that. I'm really happy with it. Check out his stuff on Instagram. Uh, continuing along. So Jeep cap, uh, repop musette bag, um, or GP bag. So pretty much all I'm keeping in here is just like extra scarves, gloves, things like that. Um, this really is cool right here. So this was made by uh, Joe Sabia, Sabia, um, but it's like a little towel or it's like a GI, um, pretty much toiletries kit. And, um, I have some glass vials and, and so forth to put in here to actually make it look legit with like my razor and everything too. Um, I've got my captured, captured, uh, German, uh, hand towel in here for now, but I'm going to fill this up and get it ready for next weekend. So, uh, this is on, you can find this on Etsy, but he's also got them on Facebook Marketplace too. So I would highly recommend. Um, here's the tag. So he hand makes these, which is really neat. So that's a cool little piece of kit. Um, moving along, 
So I have this uh, scarf here that's made out of a, an old wool blanket. And I kind of like this because uh, this probably would have been done. Um, anything they could have used to keep warm, they probably would have done it. So I'm going to be running with this. Um, moving along, I'm going with the uh, M8 and the, the knife, trench knife on my belt instead of my ankle like most paratroopers had because um, we're going to be running around in deep snow and in the woods and I don't really want to ruin or lose anything. And this is an original, um, I believe it's a Camillus blade. Yep, it is. So this is an original one. Cut down um, a little bit, which is pretty neat. So, yeah. But yeah, it was cut down just a little bit. Barely, really, you can tell her anything from one that hasn't been cut down. But um, that was relatively common for that to happen. So there's that. Um, I'm running, I believe, seven carbine mags at this event. So seven times 15 rounds. Do the math, whatever that is. Um, and even that might be pushing it for what some of these guys went into the Battle of the Bulge with. So I'm really going to be um, allocating my shots and everything that I'm doing. All right, moving along. So Canteen, this is an original 1918 Canteen. Uh, I sandblasted it, cleaned it up, did the uh, denture tablet treatment to the inside of it. So this is all sanitized, ready to go. Same with my mess kit and um, my Canteen cups. I'll get into that in a bit. But uh, carry a pack of Lucky Strikes on me, um, carry a lighter. This is a 1940s um, Storm King lighter, so this is original. Um, but I also carry a pack of matches. And this was made by uh, Verlag Kulp. They are on Instagram and Facebook out of um, Europe. And they make some incredible German reproduction items as well as American uh, reproduction items. So... Really high quality stuff. I recommend for you guys to check them out and see what they've got. Um, and every week they're restocking. So they have some really cool things uh, like this D-Bar. Uh, they actually made this and um, I'm going to eat it in the field. So pretty awesome. And it's wax dipped like it's supposed to be. So that's pretty cool. Um, back to the cigarettes. I don't condone smoking or endorse it or any type, but... Um, Pretty common for GIs to have cigarettes in World War II, and it is nice to sit back at the end of the day and enjoy one at an event. So I will leave it at that. Uh, next up, so I like to run in the field with rations. Now, um, when we're out there actually battling, um, it's pretty cool to pull one of these out and then start eating it. Um, not to be farby and have, you know, your box of Cheez-Its in your pocket or in your bag or anything like that, but to actually have one of these. So uh, there's a guy in our unit, named, his name's Shane. He recreates these for us and um, sells them to the guys. So you get the full kit, the breakfast, dinner, and supper rations. Um, since I'm taking a can of Spam along, um, I'm taking this for breakfast um, and they're pretty much down to exactly what they should be. There's a can of, I forget which, what's actually in here, but um, the crackers, the graham crackers, the coffee, um, cigarettes, literally all of it is included in here, which is awesome. Shane does incredible work, so uh, we really love whenever he has those for us. Um, next up, so Nescafe Tin, soluble coffee product. This came from Frontline Crate Co. And what I actually do is put uh, instant coffee, creamer and sugar all in one so I can just scoop this out. And if you guys are interested, um, I get these from Trader Joe's. They're instant coffee packets. So they literally come with the cream, sugar, and coffee in these uh, individual little tubes here. Um, so literally you could carry these in your pocket if you didn't want to, you know, carry a tin or whatever. But I like to have cool things at events and in my barracks. So this kind of stands out. So I've been doing this for years and uh, people have actually really loved it. So um, I carry two uh, canteen cups. This is a 1918 one that came with the uh, canteen. Uh, this one is a 1944 dated one, I believe. Uh, this one I actually use for like cooking over the fire and stuff with, so it's a little bit beat up and it's perfect for that. So I don't care if this one gets used and abused, but this one right here is um, my nicer one that I like to keep back at the barracks uh, for whenever it's drinky time. <laughs> so... This right here is a German, um, German issue fork and spoon kit. So 
It's really convenient to have all of this in one, unlike the American utensil kit where it's an individual of three, the knife, the fork, and the spoon. This thing has been a godsend, and I literally carry this in my front pocket. Um, you can find these still on eBay uh, for anywhere from like $50 to $100, depending on condition. Um, I This is my go-to for literally every event, and I do German reenacting as well, but it's very common for in the war for GIs to have picked these up when they came across them and used them. So I highly recommend if anybody's looking for something cool, a little bit of captured, you know, pocket litter to keep in their person. This is a good go-to. Next up. So this uh, B unit right here from a, a field ration C, these are made by a fellow in Belarus, I believe. Um, I picked this one up from MRE Mountain but it comes with the biscuits, the convection, and the coffee beverage in it. It's stamped coffee. Um, you've got the pull tab right there, and it even comes with the key for that tab. So this would be for your M unit later on, but this right here I'm pretty excited about. Um, original B units are very expensive and hard to find. Um, luckily, I do have one in my display case, but... Um, I've seen videos of guys using these and to have something like this on your person in the field is just really cool. So um, I'm really excited to open this up. I might do a video at the events out there opening this thing up. Um, we'll see though, but yeah, this is cool. So you can find these on MRA Mountain, but I also believe he sells them directly on eBay as well or Etsy. So I would check that out, um, really neat. So going along with that, this is a German iron ration made by the same gentleman that makes these. Um, this is like a, you can kind of hear it. It's a can of like potted meat or some kind of soup. There's a guy that did a video of it on YouTube um, and you can get this on Emory Mountain as well. But in here in this wax uh, wrap, this paper, um, wax wrap paper is like crackers and some other things to go along with this. And it's kind of like a porridge, I think. I don't know, but it's a, it's meat. Um, so I'm going to have this in my Musette bag because Americans, again, in Bastogne and the Battle of the Bulge would pretty much take anything they could find. They were starving. So having, you know, a German ration that was scavenged, um, is going to be pretty cool. So, um, I, I really don't think this is like a, uh, a pate. Um, I've seen Russian rations with pate and it looks like cat food. No, thank you but I think this is like a regular stew, so we should be good. Uh, moving along, so just standard uh, web belts. There's my can of Spam, nothing fancy to see there. So I take the wrappers off of my modern stuff. They do make reproduction wrappers, um, but I'm literally gonna eat this thing in the field, so not too concerned. Um, I bought these from Mandelein, these are my suspenders. Now I highly recommend if you do buy anything from Mandeline that you buy directly from their eBay store and not their website. These came super quick through eBay and I've heard some horror stories about their um, uh, online store. So that's just what I've heard, but I've always had good experiences with shopping from them on eBay. So um, to keep moving along, trousers, just regular 43 pair of trousers, um, ATF, five button sweater, ATF. And this K-Ration crate, I actually picked this up at D-Day Conyat this past year. I have quite a few original samples, but I didn't have a really nice reproduction one. So in here, in back of the barracks, and since this event is at a Boy Scout reservation, they, we have really nice barracks. Um, so I keep my Farby stuff in here. So you've got some hand warmers, some hot cocoa, put some waters in there, some crackers, and then a Pedialyte for when it's time to wake up in the morning after a heavy night of drinking. Uh, and some hand warmers and a little bit of other things in there. So I keep all my Farby modern uh, things in there. So as well as some uh, pinups and letters from home and, you know, you get it. <laughs> so um, moving along the blankets, uh, this aviator kit bag. This is actually an original one that I found on eBay. I highly recommend for events an aviator kit bag. And like I was saying earlier, I found this for, I think, $40.00 maybe with like $10 shipping, so like 50 bucks. That's a heck of a lot cheaper than some of the reproduction ones out there. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a What Price Glory, not a What Price Glory, um, World War II Impressions um, aviator kit bag. 
It's really, really nice. I use it for when I travel. But again, um, keep looking online. You can find some really, really good original kit out there um, that's cheaper than reproduction stuff. And then lastly, uh, moving over here, uh, my wool shirt. Uh, I've got the 502nd um, felt uh, oval on there. Well, I'll put my jump wings on there. I'm probably not going to wear this one because it's super nice and I don't want to have anything really happen to it since this is more of a tactical weekend. Now, whenever we do events where it's um, like public, you know, speaking and like really display purposes, I'll probably wear this one. And then last but not least, um, my M43 jacket. Um, these patches came from Green Army Products. He is out at, Stefan is out of the Netherlands and they are absolutely phenomenal. And I love his work. I will never put another patch on my uniform ever again besides his. So highly recommend checking his stuff out too. Um, they're probably as close to the original thing as you can actually get. So really great work and they stand out. And then last but not least, um, just uh, another flannel shirt right there, which I'll probably end up wearing. And then tanker jacket. This is original Hellcat patch, but this is the jacket that I wear when I'm working on my Jeep. So it, that's why it's a little bit, uh, a little bit oily and dirty. So yeah, um, if there's any recommendations or anything or whatever anybody else carries to their events and you're watching this video, let me know your thoughts. Um, yeah, I'm always looking to see what other people do for reenactments and, uh, um, any other ideas or tips. So thanks for checking it out, everyone.